It's about 40 degrees today and I'm just trying to stay warm inside. Today we're talking about four things I hate and four things I love about living in this vehicle. I've been living in vehicles for the past two years, um, but I've been living in this car for the past five months. So first we'll do the bad. Number four thing I hate about living in this vehicle is the headroom and that's the obvious one because you see me slouching in all my videos um, but honestly to be fair it's only in the back portion when I'm cooking or when I'm getting something from the storage when I'm in the front portion it's fine look I have headroom I'm comfortable Just remember this is where I spend most of my time this is where I eat work study everything but you know this is a sacrifice I knew because I, you know I was doing the measurements for the vehicles I knew what's my expected headroom is going to be but it's a sacrifice for the other benefits, which we'll dig into soon. The main reason for the headroom in the back is because I have storage underneath my bed. People are telling me to make the bed flat on the ground, but then where is the storage going to go? Where's my battery and electrical going to go? Uh, I had an idea of removing my front passenger seat to make more storage. I don't use that. There's nobody. Nobody visits me, guys. It's just me. I'm a solo traveler and I'm okay with it. But I actually, that, that idea is not so bad. I've done something similar before. I had my 2010 Camaro and removed the passenger seat and created a bed platform that goes from the front to the back. And I've slept in that car for months. Number three thing I hate about living in this vehicle is engine lights and car problems. Oh my God, I go into panic mode whenever something is wrong with the vehicle. But what else do I do to combat this issue is um, I have uh, some roadside assistance stuff. I have like uh, tow straps, uh, a shovel to dig myself out. I have a spare tire, of course, and the items to change a tire. And the biggest thing is I have a AAA membership, so I'm able to get free tows. Tows can be really expensive. One time I got towed um, 50 miles, it cost me $350. Uh, number two thing I hate about living in this vehicle is gas prices. This is a V8 engine, so it uses a lot of gas. Um, but honestly, it depends on your lifestyle. If you're moving a lot, yes, you're gonna see that you're paying a lot. Number one thing I hate about living in this vehicle is the color. Black color absorbs all spectrums of light and converts it into heat. And there's a big difference because I've lived in white and silver vehicles and the difference is 15 degrees. And that matters when it's 90 degrees outside and you're debating to turn on your AC and use gas or not. So I've honestly thought to myself, maybe I should have this car repainted white or silver. But knowing me, I'm not gonna pay two, three grand to have that done. I'll probably just use spray cans and do it the cheap way because I like to save money. Now let's do the four things that I love about this vehicle. Number four, the functionality. Um, everything works. Everything in this car is simple. It's not too complicated, except for the electrical. That was a headache. But for example, let's take the uh, water system. A three gallon water system that goes into a $15 water pump. Did you guys, did you guys know about these things? $15, rechargeable, comes with a hose, easy to install, works at the box. That is insane. That thing is a game changer. And I think a lot of people should start using these. I've seen setups of like van builders and other car conversions where it's like they have two pipes coming in, hot, cold, and then you got these extensions and then, then you got the pipe fittings and then the pump is separate that needs its own power source. And then you got to go to the faucet. You got to... Uh, built the faucet and then oh my god I don't like any of that that's way too much work I like it simple and easy and I hope you're getting the message of what I'm trying to do here the sink it's a basic small sink that goes out into one gallon that means I can empty that by hand anywhere number three thing I love about this vehicle the layout when I was designing this layout you know I wanted it to be a little bit unique I got inspired from watching a lot of videos but I did things a little bit my way and um a lot of I watched a lot of setups and a lot of these setups had the very trending theme of like the bed going from side to side and then storage underneath the bed that you have to go outside the vehicle and pull the drawer and stuff comes out uh, to me that just did not make sense you know imagine it's 4 p 4 a.m. or any time of the day and you want to get something from there you gotta go out that's just for me that I feel like that ruins the idea of stealth also I've gotten a lot of comments saying how this place feels bigger than what it is and I think I know why I feel like there's an illusion that the space is spacious because everything in this vehicle is miniature the cabinet is miniature it's not a standard 30 inch cabinet that you see 
This type of cabinet is meant to go on walls. It's hung, but, but it fits my purpose. Also, um, the hallway is tiny. The bed is small and the sink is small. So all of these together give the illusion that this place is spacious, is more spacious than it is. Number two thing I love about this vehicle, it's a hotel on wheels, you know? Uh, when people wanna go on vacation, they, what, they book uh, flights and uh, rooms. I don't have to do any of that. I just take my car and go. Uh, does it use more gas? Absolutely. But that's the thing, you can take your home, you can park it anywhere. You can be beachfront, you can be mountainside, you can be anywhere. Number one thing I love about this vehicle, oh my god, ready? Ready for this? It's the size. It's the size. I know, you're like, what? Arsenal, don't you wish you had a bigger space? No, no, no. And let me tell you why. I've lived in big vehicles. I've lived in a high roof Sprinter. And I lived in a Camaro. And this is like somewhere in between. And, um, you know, this is 18 feet long and six and a half feet wide. This vehicle is easier to park. There's no learning curve, you know. Um, when you get a van or an RV, something 28, 30 feet, there's a learning curve. You're going to have to learn how to make wider turns. You're going to learn how to parallel park. You're going to have to learn how to back it up. I can squeeze this into a small, tiny plaza. I can squeeze into lines between next to other cars. That's something to keep in mind if you're concerned with the driving of the vehicle and how it's going to be parked. Also, regarding the size, it's going to help you stealth camp. This looks like a regular car from the outside. The only thing giving me away is my solar panels. Uh, but that's about it. Like I go to a mall parking lot. I can just easily blend in. With a van or an RV, you're gonna stand out. I start thinking, oh, what if they don't like that I'm here? Maybe they'll get scared. Maybe they'll start staring or talking about me. Or maybe they'll get nervous or call somebody about me. I don't know. So being stealth for me makes me feel better. Let's not forget, with a smaller size, there's less surface area. So it's cheaper to convert and faster to convert. Would you believe me if I said I converted this in three weeks? three weeks. I'm excited for the future guys. More content coming out, more videos. I recorded some footage of me building this vehicle. I'm gonna edit these down and make a video. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna start making a lot more content about car living. What's it like? What do I do? A day, a day in the life. I can make videos on uh, the, my electrical setup. How I make my reflectics. I'll make a video on that. If you want to make suggestions for future content, put it in the comment section. I'll read it and give you my opinion. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Man, I'm hungry. Ugh.